And beginning the broadcast, according to the latest USDA crop progress report, 13 states have begun corn planting. No numbers in for Nebraska yet, but Texas farmers lead the nation with 57% of their crop in the ground. Overall, growers have planted 4% of this year's crop. That's 1% ahead of this point in 2020 and the five-year average. Darren Newsom, president of Darren Newsom Analysis, joined me Wednesday for a closer look and a detailed check of the markets. Yeah, right now, I haven't heard a lot about planters rolling. I know there has been some. Uh, I visited with, with, with a gentleman actually over in Southern Illinois, where in his area, mo uh, soybeans go in before corn. And so, you know, I, I'm not hearing about a lot of corn being planted at this point. The concern right now is this is a cold blast, not only that we're seeing this week, but the one that's in the forecast for the coming weeks where, you know, what it's going to do is it's going to slow everything down again. Those crops that have been planted, germination is going to slow down. Uh, it doesn't change anything about new crop. Both corn and soybeans are bullish. But I think it puts a spotlight back on the corn market uh, in particular because, you know, we, we needed to rebuild the corn stocks and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. Give me an idea of the basis that we're seeing in corn and soybeans, the movement there, and what that number is telling us. Well, in the middle part of this past week, we saw a soybean basis, the national average soybean basis. And what I look at is the, is the commodity national soybean basis index uh, created by bar chart. And what, what it is posted 33 consecutive days. It had posted 33 consecutive days of, of stronger of stronger values. So, I mean, it has strengthened 33 days in a row, basically since it rolled to the May 2021 contract. It's just an incredible run. Corn has done much the same. So we've got incredibly strong basis going on right now, both corn and soybeans. What it tells us is even though we've seen demand slowing down, particularly in, in uh, soybean exports, uh, what we've got is an incredibly tight supply situation. And, and that's what basis is telling us right now. All things, all argument, all discussions in the grain industry start with basis. And Darren, let me get in a question about wheat. We've been seeing some news there. What's been the driver in that market? Yeah, you know, as, as we hit midweek, uh, wheat all of a sudden just exploded higher. We saw some cold temperatures uh, earlier this week, you know, with with uh, sub freezing moving as far south as, as uh, south, excuse me, as uh, west central Kansas. And so, you know, there is a concern and then their you know, forecasts are calling for more sub freezing temperatures across the plains. So again, I think it comes back down to weather. We, we saw an incredible rally leading off with winter markets. So I think this is going to continue. Is it a little premature to get overly excited about freeze damage in wheat? Yes. I mean, it, it, it's very resilient. I like to call it the cockroach of the grain world. It just doesn't like to die. It can survive just about anything. But the market seems to be concerned. And again, this is the market following the weather. Weather's turning cold uh, here in the spring. Futures market is reacting. And so we have to give it some room, have to let it run probably give us some pretty good selling opportunities, you know, for those producers who are looking to get some uh, some new crop wheat hedged along the way. And next up, let's talk about South America. We could probably spend an entire interview discussing what's happening in South America. But for the sake of time, give our viewers one or two of the main things that you're watching that we need to be aware of. Okay, issue number one, the Brazilian real is incredibly weak. Uh, it continues to hang near its long-term lows while the dollar is trying to firm. So what this has, you know, it, you combine that with the new of the supplies that are available due to harvest in South America, particularly in soybeans. Uh, we're looking at Brazilian port prices well below those that we're seeing here in the United States. This has led to a conga line basically stretching from Brazilian ports to China right now. The question is, will this continue? How long will this continue? And will China do what it did last year and basically drain uh, Brazil? of its supplies and have to turn back to the U.S. And if so, where are we going to get the supplies? So the biggest things I see in Brazil right now, the incredible exports that it's doing right now, the cheap Brazilian real and the, and, the, uh, and the lower price for Brazilian soybeans than U.S. And Darren, let's end things today with any marketing or risk management advice that you want to leave us with that we can take away from today's conversation. 
Yeah, you know, I, I think what we have to do is, it, you know, we don't see these opportunities very often in corn. Probably the, the last time we saw a situation develop like this was in 2005, 2006, and that carried over into the summer of 2008. What we have to be very careful with here, again, comes back to weather. If it turns hot and dry uh, with the ability of specs now, or investment funds and speculators to double the, their position size, you know, we could really see an explosive market as we move through the spring and summer on any sort of weather concern. So we have to give these markets plenty of room. We have tight supplies coming out of one marketing year and into the next. So I'm not going to sit there and I'm not going to put a lot of targets in place. I'm going to let these markets run more, more often than that, I'm going to use, I'm going to use stops, sell stops, trailing these things. So I want to see a good momentum change before we start loading up the books on 2021 production.